So my, I'm not paying much more than I paid in rent. Right. So all in all, collectively, my monthly obligation isn't vastly different from what it was even then, truly. I mean, as a renter, as a renter, 10 years ago, because again, I've been locked in with my mortgage. Now it's more, my, my insurance is like so many people listening mm -hmm. right now. My property insurance is essentially doubled. So, you know, it's gone up, but, and we homesteaded. So, I mean, we, we've mm -hmm. locked in pretty good. Um, but had you stayed a renter and also had your life changes, right? Cause you got married. Yeah. Had a kid. If you yep. stayed a renter and done all that, I don't think there's any way it's hard to save. Oh, they, hard, I hard promise you, I promise you, there's nowhere. I'm not close, not close to the, the that number if we're talking about it, the equity mm -hmm. versus being able to save that dollar for dollar no no and no, and that's no, what drives not, not me even close. and that's what drives me crazy when i read there's a couple of um real estate economists that are down here at a bunch of the universities very respected um professors in the field but they keep putting out in the papers don't buy that they feel that um south florida hmm. area you're better renting than buying we're in that kind of market and they have all these calculations to figure it out and um and the the theory behind it is is that if you were to because the mortgages are so high right now that if you rented and you took the money difference that you used to buy the house and the difference in the mortgage payment and you started investing that properly that you get a much better return than you get on the value of just buying the home and i'm like yeah but then you have to become a financial person that really understands how to use stocks wisely or invest your money wisely, not just throwing it in a 401k and waiting, right? right? Uh, because that won't give you the kind of return that the house would, right? So I don't get why they say being a renter, because I think that if you were renting today, right, it's 12 years later from the, from the, we started the show, I do not think that you'd have the quote net wealth you have. Nope. And it's all because you decided 10 years ago to buy your fixer upper house, right? right? How do you have and, enough money I mean, the premise there is like, instead of paying your mortgage, you know, whatever your, your housing obligation is, principal interest, tax insurance, mm -hmm. HOA, you know, whatever, instead of paying that uh, for your housing, put that into some sort of investment, right? That's, that's the premise mm -hmm. and do that over the long term. Yep. But then you still have to rent. So how do you afford to do that? Like, yeah. it's like they having a double take, housing. They, they make it sound like rent hasn't gone up. Yeah. If you live <laughs> yeah. with your parents. Yeah, the well, whole that time. Would be, yeah, that would be different. <laughs> or rent right? free, yep. like something like that. But you, how, how can you double your housing obligation like that? We're really going to try to get. We're going to try to get some of those professors on, not to like do it's, a gotcha moment. because yeah. you know, we're, our show's not about yeah, that. No, but I just like to ask them. Yeah, yeah. So I'm tell sure me, you, you know. Tell me, explain to the public. I'm yeah. sure you could questions. crunch these numbers some way. But I'll, I'll ask if you went to just. It doesn't pass the smell test because if you talk to anybody who's owned a home, with the exception of like the 2006 to 2012 kind of like big dip if you talk to anybody who owned a home they have the 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 wealth that they created through home ownership is second to, like there's there's nothing that can replace that right right absolutely right there's just anybody so <laughs> i you, the the five to seven year thing you talked about earlier i just think of my own personal history of course it's anecdotal i think i bought my first home in 99 uh sold it in 2005 so you're right six there. years six years right the next one was 2005 sold in 2012 right oh. so seven years now the current, current home i've been in for the past so 2012 through to now so 12 years but this one feels like it may be a little bit more longer term like you kind of dug in on yeah. this one yeah yeah more. i'm yeah. pretty dug in on this one just because yeah. i love where, where I live. you're at like i got yeah. no, no i I've not i've got no big life changes anymore right right hopefully Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I basically, with the exception of the one, I generated wealth in, in each, you know, two of the three scenarios sure. based on that. And I think that's why if you talk to anybody who's owned a home, that's just how it happens. Like that's just part of the American dream is not only home ownership, but also the the appreciation and the value of the home. Like how many assets do you own that appreciate like that? But have the potential to even appreciate like that. Yeah, of course. And so then, yeah, you can do your investments, your retirement funds, and all that. But and, home clear, and clearly, it's not a blanket statement. There are times yeah, where course. people have gotten hosed, and yeah, and and that's that that's, part of that's what weighed on me 